Okay, so now we're going to look at some quadratic graphs, or a graph that has an x squared term in it. Now these are always in the form y equals a times y x squared plus b times x plus c. c is the same as it was before, it's our y intercept point. So, let's look at the most simple ones of these graphs. Let's look at the y equals x squared graph. Y equals x squared graph. So let's plot the points in. What would y equal if x equals 1? 1 squared is 1. What about if x equals 2? Two? 2 squared is 4. What about if x equals 3? Well, 3 squared is 9. Okay, and the same the other way around. Minus 1 squared is going to be 1. Because minus 1 times minus 1 is going to be positive when minus times minus. So minus 2 is going to be plus 4. And minus 3. Plus nine. So we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. Okay. But what about if we change this intercept point? What about if we still keep a zero here, but we suddenly introduce something here? Well, we get y equals x squared plus four say. Well, all it's going to do is shift it, shift it up. So we'll do this one in blue. So we're just going to move up 4, aren't we? So the 0 point is going to become 4. When x is 0, y is going to be 4. When x is 1, y is going to be 5 now. And same on this side. And again, instead of 2 being 4, 2 is going to be 8. Minus 2. Therefore also will be 8. So we'll end up with a graph that looks something like this. Okay, so they're all great. They're all nice and easy to work out. What about if we've got a slightly more complicated graph? What about if we've got, let's do this in green, y equals minus 2x squared plus 4x. Plus one. What about if we've got that? Well, we can see the intercept point is going to be one again, because when x is zero, the whole thing is going to be one. So we know it's going to go through this point here. So I got the rest of it, we're going to have to put some values in. So let's see what it's going to be when x is one. So put x is one in. What's that going to be? Okay, well, x is one, we're going to get one squared, so we're going to get minus two here plus 4, plus 1. Minus 2 plus 4 plus 1 is going to give us plus 3. So 1, we're going to get plus 3. Okay, what about when x is 2? Okay, well, we're going to get my 2 squared is 4, times minus 2 is going to give us minus 8. 4 times the 2 is going to give us an 8, and then we're going to get the 1. So when it's 2, it's going to equal 1. So we're coming back down again. So it looks like we've got our peak. It's going to be here at 1, 3. Okay, well, we could draw it based on that, but we might as well go one further each way. So let's go one further this way just to see how far a drop is going to go. So we'll do x is minus 1. x is minus 1, we're going to get minus 1 squared again is 1. So minus 2. This time we're going to have minus 4. And then we're going to have the 1. So minus 2, minus 4, 6. So we're actually going to get that it's minus 5 this time. So we're going to go right the way down to minus 5. And I would expect 3 to also give us minus 5, but we'll see if that is what it does give us. So, uh, for x equals 3, we can get 9 squared, so it's 3 squared is 9, sorry, times by the minus 2, it's going to give us minus 18. 4 times 3 is 12. And then 
plus the one is going to give us what we thought was going to give us the minus five. Same as on the other side. So we can get three minus five. So we're going to get a graph that looks roughly like that. Basically, that's the way x squared graphs work. We, they are generally, they're always bucket shapes. It just depends how big the value in front will tell you how thin or fat that bucket shape is going to be. This, again, the 4x value will also have a bearing on how thin or fat it's going to be. And the one purely is your point where it crosses. Now, when you're drawing them, sometimes you might be asked to sketch them. When you're sketching them, basically make sure you get the intersect in the right place. Don't worry too much about anything else. Obviously, if it's really, these are two relatively big numbers, then keep it roughly the same size as a normal x squared graph. And that's what you really need to do. So what is actually interesting about these graphs is often we need to find out these values, the points where they cross the x-axis. And that's not always that easy. And we can't always read it directly off the graph. So what we need to do is we need to solve a quadratic equ equation. Now you can draw one. Now we need to be able to solve them. So, we'll look at that in the next lesson. Practice a few of these, drawing them yourself. There's a few examples in the book. Not too many because it's quite time consuming and it's relatively easy. But have a go at those and then come back and we'll have a go at solving them. See where it crosses the x-axis.